The year is 2169. You are playing Arknights. Your team is composed of Sutra Alter, Hibiscus Alter Alter, Joker from Persona 5, Nagito Komaeda, Enterprise from Azur Lane, and Closure. The game is now going through CC 456. Yes, they brought it back. Every operator now recovers 80% of HP per second and deals 50k damage with every hit. Every stage has 40 Patriots in them to compensate. The operators now use Tier 12 Chapter 87 materials. Arknights has changed. It's no longer about archives, niche nights, or events. It's an endless series of contingency contracts fought by Ling, Alter, 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 and Sans Undertale. Arknights and its consumption of my wallet have become a well-oiled machine. But despite it all, Myrtle is still meta and in every f***ing team. And the base is still in beta. How is one little lolly that can't grab things on the top of the fridge this utterly timeless? And why has the attempt to power creeper with Silich failed? That is exactly what I'll try to explain in this video. So hello there, it's me, Asupa, once again delivering a completely unbiased video about a certain operator. Which, of course, also includes bad-mouthing a related operator that you really like. So, Myrtle. When an operator is the most used operator in the entire player base for 11 consecutive CCs, something's gone wrong. I know that all of you know that Myrtle is strong and invaluable, but the reasons why go really deep, and they involve elementary game mechanics that Myrtle abuses to achieve her status. At first, she might not seem that good. I know that I, personally, as a new player, didn't see Myrtle's appeal. Well, I was clearly a complete moron, because then Myrtle made a hole through my skull with her flag, through which her divine light was able to touch my brain and enlighten me. Let's start from the very beginning. The entire balance of Arknights as a tower defense game at launch was based on one core pillar that dictated every stage and every operator, Deployment Points, or DP, the currency you need to place down your PNG waifus. Essentially, every operator in the game was balanced around it, Low DP units were usually the weaker ones, while the big boys costed a lot more. You exchanged power for sitting your ass down and waiting for the DP to generate. This seems fine, I can't really see what would go wrong. Yeah, Myrtle threw all that out the window. DP is no longer even a factor most of the time. It only comes back into play with DP risks, because Myrtle can just levitate her f***ing apple and summon a mudrock out of thin air. Let's go in order. Myrtle's skills and talents are all very simple. Skill 1 makes her stop attacking and gain 14 dp over 8 seconds. Skill 2 makes her stop attacking, gain 16 dp and heal everyone in a 3x3 area for 16 seconds. Lastly, her talent passively heals all vanguards on the field. Let's go from worst to best. Skill 2. At first, one might assume that it's a straight upgrade over skill 1. It heals, and it also makes more DP. 
But if you said that, you'd be stupid, and I would make fun of you. It doesn't actually make more DP. This is because the skill is double the length of skill 1. So yes, you do make more DP with a single activation, but skill 1 ends up always making more DP, because you get to activate it twice as often as skill 2. For skills that make DP, you want them to end really fast, so they can start charging again, and you can activate them again sooner. The only real use that skill 2 has is in the integrated strategies Poison Mist stages. Next, her talent is quite decent, but nothing broken. There are a couple of stages where Myrtle is able to sustain Saga or Backpipe on her own, but it doesn't happen too often. Most of the time, this talent will be used to keep Myrtle herself alive, in whatever dark corner of the stage you put her in. Another specification is that it recovers a set amount of HP, not a percentage, so vanguards with higher max HP will benefit less from this. Now the broken stuff, the thing that makes Myrtle shatter the entire balance of Arknights. Skill 1. It makes the original balance of the game centered around DP completely obsolete. Another way that you could read this skill is uh, reduce the cost of the next operator you deploy by 14. Worded like this, I'm sure you understand exactly why it broke the balance of the game, especially when you can activate it so often. With this core pillar of the game balance completely shattered, Arknights changed to suit Myrtle. DP is essentially randomized for new operators, Mountain is busted and he's 10 DP, while Unectis... let's say she costs too much. But there are cases where Myrtle can't help you, maybe the stage has a huge rush at the start, and Myrtle just doesn't have the time to make DP for you, so at the very least... Here comes Bagpipe. If Myrtle tossed the balance of the game out a window, Bagpipe then loaded it into a rocket and shot it into the stratosphere. Now Myrtle activates instantly if Bagpipe is potential fire. Literally, it's instant. You place her down and you immediately get 6 DP for the 8 you spent deploying her. We already talked about Bagpipe in another video that you should watch after this one. Even on her own, she is an incredible unit, and then she also makes Myrtle better. Again, for a more detailed explanation, you can watch this video after this one. Alright, now we have a problem. Bagpipe and Myrtle in the same team make way too much DP way too soon completely trivializing an entire foundational game mechanic. We need a way to fix this. We need... No low light making Myrtle 2.0 isn't the solution. Finally, with Elysium, our Flagpipe trio is complete. If Myrtle threw the balance of the game out the window and Bagpipe shot it into the stratosphere, Elysium made sure it landed on the sun and got pulverized. Putting all three of them in any team will make you deploy a small army against the poorer Union facts that were foolish enough to pick this job. Not only does Elysium make, overall, more DP than Myrtle at the cost of a slower start, he also has an incredible secondary niche. Elysium's skill 2 debuffs defense a ton, makes DP, and removes invisibility. Flagpipe is possibly the best strategy in the entire game. You sh** out so much resources that the enemies can't keep up with you. 
So what happens now is that the stages have to account for it. You need to make stages that can still be challenging, knowing that some players can deploy Jesus Christ and Sonic the Hedgehog right at the start. So you make really heavy DP risks, you make challenge modes that increase DP costs, you make early rushes that physically don't give Flagpipe the time to produce DP. Let's slow down again. Myrtle changed the entire game around her, so Hypergriff got a devious idea. Hey, if we managed to power creep Myrtle, we'd possibly make the best unit in the entire game. Do you have any idea how much the whales will spend on that? So, Lowlight Dreana and his team of ragtag developers and crack addicts started working on Silich, the six-star Myrtle that would bring an end to the Durin era. Except she failed. Silich is kind of mid, her niches are done better by others, and she's also bland as a character. I am certain most of you forget she's in the game about once every 48 hours. Even with Chapter 9 shoving her in your face, you can almost hear Lowlight as you read Chapter 9 shouting, please roll Silich. So, what the f happened now? How is it possible that Elysium and Silich, with skills that strictly produce more DP than Myrtle, didn't manage to power creep her? Well, it's because Myrtle abuses a second core mechanic of the game. Rare it is. Myrtle is better because she's a 4 star. Let me explain. The idea is that 4 stars are weak, and the more you progress in rarity, the better the units become. What this means is that 6 stars require a lot of investments, 5 stars are pretty pricey, and 4 stars are really cheap, and really easy to roll in the gacha. So you have this incredibly strong unit, that is also really easy to roll in the gacha, and that is also really easy to build properly, and that is also really cheap to deploy, all because she is low rarity. This also applies to Gammy, by the way. Uh, this is why she is the best unit in the game, and anyone that says uh, Saria or uh, OG Nearl are better uh, will get shadow banned from the channel. You may complain that this is a kind of a dictatorship, and I will say, yes it is. And this is why Myrtle cannot be power crept by a 5 star or a 6 star flag bearer. The fact that she is low rarity inherently makes her better. Elysium is relevant as a side grade thanks to his stupid strong defense shred niche and thanks to the fact that he does produce more DP than Myrtle in the long run. And Silich just can't compare at all, making her nothing more than a luxury unit that you deploy to flex on the viewers. Of course, you can also deploy all three at once with Bagpipe, and at that point, there is no stage that can challenge you. The problem is that Silich is a 6 star, so unless you were there for the rate up banners, it's kind of hard to get your hands on her. To conclude, I like Myrtle. Shocker. Even if she forced the game to change around her. It is undeniable that the game would be in a completely different state had she never existed. So what do you think? Was Myrtle a mistake? Or do you like the direction she put the game in? What do you think the game would look like without Flagbearers? 
Let me know in the comments, I'll be interested in reading them. Also, max out your gummy. Everything discussed in this video also applies to her, but like uh, quadruple it.